Mr. Skinny was extraordinarily thin, painfully thin. If he turned sideways, you could hardly see him at all. And what made it even worse was that he lived in a place called Fatland. Yes, Fatland. As you can very well imagine, everything and everybody in Fatland was as fat as could be. Not stout, fat. Fatland dogs were extremely fat. Fatland worms were extraordinarily fat. Fatland birds were exceedingly fat. And you should see a Fatland elephant. Phew! And there, in the middle of all this fatness, lived Mr. Skinny. In the thinnest house you've ever seen. Poor Mr. Skinny. He didn't like being so different from everything and everybody. But there wasn't very much he could do about it. You see, he had hardly any appetite at all. A Mr. Skinny meal was a very meager affair. Do you know what he had for breakfast? One cornflake. And for lunch, one baked bean. And for tea, nothing. And for supper, the world's smallest sausage. And after that, he felt so full, he went straight to bed. In his long, thin bed, in his long, thin bedroom, in his long, thin house in Fatland. Oh, I do so wish I could do something about my appetite, he sighed to himself just before he went to sleep. I think, he thought, that I had better go and see the doctor about it. And he went to sleep. The following morning was lovely. A large, fat sun shone down on the fat green trees and the fat yellow flowers, and through them walked Mr. Skinny on his way to see the doctor. Dr. Plump! Come in, come in, he wheezed as Mr. Skinny knocked at his door. Sit down, sit down, he wheezed as Mr. Skinny entered. And what, he wheezed, putting his plump fingers together, seems to be the trouble. It's my appetite, explained Mr. Skinny. I'd like to be able to eat more so that I could put on a little weight. Yes, you are rather, how shall I put it, thin, wheezed the doctor, looking at him over his glasses. I know, he continued. Let's start the treatment right now. He licked his lips. This very moment, he added. And he opened a drawer in his desk and took out an enormous cream cake. He put it on the desk in front of him, and opened another drawer and took out half a dozen donuts, and put them on the desk in front of him, and opened another drawer and took out a dozen currant buns, and put them on the desk in front of him. Elevenses, he explained. But it's only ten o'clock, said Mr. Skinny. Who's counting, wheezed Dr. Plump. And without further ado, he and Mr. Skinny ate the lot. Mr. Skinny ate a dab of cream, a donut crumb, and one currant. Dr. Plump ate the rest. Mmm, wheezed Dr. Plump popping the last currant bun into his mouth and looking at Mr. Skinny. I see, he said, what you mean about your appetite. He thought for a moment. Only one thing for it, he wheezed. This calls for drastic measures, and he picked up his telephone in his podgy fingers and dialed a number. One hundred miles away, the telephone rang. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, said a voice. Do you know whose voice it was? Mr. Greedy speaking, said the voice. Mr. Greedy listened to what Dr. Plump had to say. You'd like a Mr. Skinny to come to stay, he said. To build up his appetite, he added. Delighted, he agreed. 
And so Mr. Skinny went to stay with Mr. Greedy. He stayed for a month. And during that time, Mr. Greedy did manage to increase Mr. Skinny's appetite. And so at the end of the month, Mr. Skinny returned home happy. With a tummy. A tummy was something Mr. Skinny had always wanted. I never knew I had it in me, he chuckled to himself. He was feeling so proud of his tummy, he decided to call in and see Dr. Plump on his way home. I say, wheezed Dr. Plump, looking him up and down. Congratulations! Tell you what, he went on, this calls for a celebration. And he opened his desk drawer.